Our topic today is single, ready to mingle. As humans, we are made to connect and interact. We have an inherent desire to be close to other people, to connect and build relationships. So as singles, it is normal to create contact with other people. Because among other things, social contact helps us to cope with stress and major life challenges. The truth is, the relationships we form with other people are vital to our spiritual, physical, mental, and emotional well-being, and really our entire life. However, relationships, just as any other venture that must succeed, require time, energy, and effort to build. A successful relationship involves two people who are spiritually, physically, and mentally whole, who have faith in God and in each other, who have freedom to give of themselves to one another and a desire to build a strong and healthy relationship. A common trend, however, I've discovered among young people on social media these days, when they come across posts of newlywed is commenting, God, when? They ask when it will be their turn. So as a single desiring to mingle, I want to share a few thoughts with you today that I believe will be of help. Before you mingle, one, be spiritually ready. Romans 8, 6 tells us to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Your spirit man is the real you. Therefore, preparation towards a relationship must begin from there. You must ensure that you have a solid relationship with God. Ensure your salvation. If you are not yet born again, you have a responsibility to do so and do so right now. Constantly study the Bible. Pray, meditate, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Serve in various capacity in your local church. Be consistent in fellowship. There is a song years ago we used to sing, very simple but powerful. Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. How well and often do you pray, study, or read the Bible? Prayer and Bible study is communicating with God. And you can't build a meaningful relationship without effective communication. If you cannot communicate regularly and effectively with God, how will you communicate with other people effectively? Make it a habit. Consciously, intentionally, and excitedly build a strong relationship with God by ensuring a quality work with Him. How you relate with God will definitely affect the way you relate with other people, especially in a romantic relationship. You need to understand that. One of the ways to know if you are spiritually ready for a relationship is to be sure you can trust God's will concerning your relationship choice. Are you truly willing to obey God irrespective of your feelings or connection with anyone being spiritually ready also makes you sensitive to the kind of relationships you keep or help you build a relationship on true Christian values. Lack of spiritual sensitivity usually brings calamity. You will not end your journey in calamity in Jesus' name. You need spiritual discernment to know the people to allow into your life. I give my own personal testimony and example. While I was single before I ever got married, God helped me to be able to have a strong spiritual relationship with Him. I gave my life to Jesus Christ as a teenager. And that, from the beginning, gave me opportunity to learn and to be able to know when God is speaking to me. And so every man that ever approached me ever before I met my husband for a relationship, before they came, God always told me they were coming and he always gave me the answer. That made life super easy for me. You need to sharpen your spiritual sensitivity and to be able to do so, you have to play down on self and be focused on God. Your own testimony can be stronger. 
Before my husband now ever spoke to me then, God told me he was going to come and he gave me the answer. So it wasn't a surprise to me when he came. God can do something better for you. You are his child. Does your relationship therefore glorify God? Does it make you grow spiritually? Or is it drowning you further away from God? Think very deeply. When you are spiritually ready, you will understand the purpose of every relationship, how to set boundaries and relate effectively. And remember, don't compromise standards. Because if you don't stand for nothing, you will fall for anything. Number two, you must be physically ready before you mingle. Life is synonymous with growth and development, and this is a personal responsibility. One of the reasons some people get frustrated in a relationship, I've come to discover, is because of inadequate physical development and preparation. If you are not physically prepared, you may negatively affect those around you. You might even become a liability unto them instead of an asset. Do you have something doing, a job, a trade, a skill, business? How financially stable are you? Are you living from hand to mouth and begging all around? Be involved in something productive. Pursue after your calling. Use your gift and talent wisely. Don't bury your rich potentials in search of a relationship. Remember, God hates waste. Be able to care for yourself because if you cannot make provision for your own personal basic needs while single, there is no need bringing someone else on board in your life. It's time to grow up. Remember, marriage is not for boys and girls, but for men and women. Ephesians 5.31 tells us, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. The Bible places emphasis on the word man, not boy, woman, not girl. Though maturity is not only in age, it is a crucial part of it. Physical stamina is a necessary requirement. Be able to assume responsibility for your actions. Be mature enough to care for someone else other than yourself. Someone has said that maturity is achieved when a person postpones immediate pleasure for long-term value. Have you gained parental independence? Have you been detached from the aprons of your parents? Or do you still depend on your parents for everything? And if there's a mistake in any way, oh, it's my father who said I should do that. Oh, it's my mother. Oh, my uncle is at fault. No. Work on yourself. Find out areas where you need to improve. You can even make a self-improvement list and seek counsel where necessary. Set goals for yourself and work on achieving them. And importantly, improve on your appearance. The way you dress is the way you will be addressed. You do not have a second chance to make a first impression. Always appear like a child of God, dignified and respectable. My husband has always shared a testimony how early in his life when he gave his life to Jesus Christ and he received the understanding that every Christian, every child of God is a king and a priest. Before he went out, he would look at himself and check himself. Would a king dress like this? Will a child of God appear like this? So importantly, your physical appearance should not depict carelessness, irresponsibility, or that you are disorganized. For you guys, you don't go out or keep your life. The tie is flying in one direction. The hair is unkept. The same thing for ladies. You wear clothes and the colors are rioting. They don't complement each other. No, organize your life. And very importantly, be open to mingling opportunities. Don't stay locked up in your house. It's been said, and I think it's very, very true. If you want light to come into your life, you need to stand where it is shining. Singles ready to mingle, attend church functions, church programs, wedding ceremonies, workshops, seminars, which offer the opportunity for connection with singles. And of course, who are your friends? You should be mindful 
of the kind of friends you keep. Proverbs 13:20, the Bible says, He that walks with the wise shall be wise, and the companion of fools shall be destroyed. Show me your friend, and I will tell you who you are. You can't hang out with wrong people and expect to live a positive life. The company you keep, the time is what accompanies you and how far you will go in life. So choose your friends wisely. Some of you listening to me now, you need to dissociate yourself from some people that you are accompanying with. Number three, be mentally ready before you mingle. Philemon 1.14 tells us, but without your mind will I do nothing. Your mind is the gateway to your life. It determines your life, extend the quality of your life. So single, before you enter into any relationship, ensure that you enhance your mental output. This is critical. Study relevant educative materials that can illuminate your mind. Know yourself, your likes and dislikes. Before you enter any relationship, define the purpose of that relationship. This is important. Learn how to build healthy relationships, sharpen your mind, refuse to allow opportunities to pass you by. Build intelligence. If you need to advance in education, do so. Get a degree. Do an online course. You can have a little knowledge about several things. Don't put yourself in the dark. It is rightly said, you will be the same person you are today in five years' time, except for the books you read and the friends you keep. Your mind is the center of your emotions. So mental readiness involves emotional stability. How stable are you in your emotions? How emotionally stable are you? You need a solid ground to build anything, including relationship. Do you get angry at the slightest provocation? How patient, kind, caring, accommodating are you? Before you commit yourself into a marital relationship, ensure you have purged yourself of every wound, hurt, pain, negative feeling, or baggage, especially from previous failed relationships, negative family background, or known negative experiences of others. This is critical. Use pain as a stepping stone, not as a camping ground. Don't punish your present relationship for what your past relationship did. It is a wholesome man and a wholesome woman that makes a successful marriage. Understand it. How forgiving are you? Holding on to unforgiveness, I've come to discover, is like grasping a hot coal with the intention of throwing it at someone else. You know what? You are the one who gets burned. Deal honestly. Be disciplined in your words, in your actions, in your thoughts, in your time, in your courage, in your finances, in your relationships. Exercise integrity and faithfulness before you mingle. Develop a biblical money habit. Are you involved in impulsive spending? I have come to discover a very simple habit of how to handle money. Give some, save some, and spend some. That will help you in a lifetime. Choose to be joyful. This is very critical because nobody wants a person who is always gloomy, constantly unhappy, or always frowning. No, a happy, joyful spirit will cause people to be attracted to you and bring life and energy to any relationship. If you are not happy being single, the truth is you can't be happy in a relationship. Always look on the bright side of life. Be positive. You are responsible for your own happiness. So learn to constantly smile. Beware of bad moods and wrong emotions. The Bible says, 1 Timothy 6, 6, Godliness with contentment is great gain. So learn to be contented. Fight against worry and fear. Learn to trust the Lord instead. Avoid complaining. Embrace gratitude as an attitude. I read the testimony of the great man of God, Lesa Sombra, not long ago. Before marriage, he envisioned the kind of family he wanted. So he prayed and asked God to establish it. He was determined to prove that a busy evangelist and missionary could still take time to shepherd his own children into the kingdom of God. 
According to him, he decided to prepare himself towards becoming a good husband and father. He committed to studying the scriptures and the lives of well-men Christians so he could learn from them. And God helped him, he had a good testimony. As you listen today, your testimony shall be stronger in Jesus' name. You must prepare spirit, soul, and body before you begin to mingle. For every single out there listening to me, I pray for you today that the grace to get yourself prepared, spirit, soul, and body, before you begin to mingle, be released unto you right now in Jesus' name. If you are in a relationship and you know that God is not there, the grace to take decision and make a U-turn, receive it in Jesus' name. Some of you might have been waiting for mingling opportunities. As you listen today, I pray that the God of heaven will open your eyes and lead you in the right direction. In conclusion, the most profound relationship you will ever have is the one with yourself. So singles, before you mingle, work on yourself because that is who you will spend the rest of your life with. Remember, whatever you take into marriage is what you get from it. You cannot make a good omelet out of bad eggs. I pray for you today, you will have a sound testimony and you have a great future, no regret on your side in the name of Jesus Christ. As I close, very importantly, you must be born again. Pray this salvation prayer with me wherever you may be. Oh God, today I come to you. I'm a sinner. Jesus, save me. From this day forward, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Congratulations. If you pray that prayer, you are now born again. Please log on to the website address at the bottom of your screen and fill the salvation form. And I have a special gift for you today. It's titled, After Salvation, What Next? You can log on to the same address and you can get that gift. It is free. And ensure to attend a Bible preaching and believing church near you. Send your testimonies through the same medium and connect to the social media handles at the bottom of your screen. And always remember, God is too faithful to fail. See you next time.